This video demonstrates the concept of a licensed server. A licensed server allows you to distribute your protected application to a company and allow them to run it on up to X number of computers within the company network. We're going to be using several applications to create our protected application and generate the licensed server and monitor applications that gets distributed to the company. The company will run the licensed server on a Mac or Windows computer and it can serve licenses to applications that are running either on Mac, Windows, or Linux machines on that company network. These are the tools we'll be using. In the source folder, we have a simple application that we're going to be applying a license uh, for demonstration purposes and it just when launched presents a hello window. We're going to start with a quick license application that's used to define a license. You can create lots of different types of licenses. In this case, we're going to create a simple floating license. So we're bringing up a dialog that has the information used to define the license. We simply set it to never time out, allow same computer reactivation. We set it to be a floating license. And on the server options dialog, we've set this checkbox with some other, other information. One of the parameters we've defined is how many uh, copies of our application can run on the network at a time. We set that to five. Uh, you can set that to whatever you want. And you could also, once you've built your server and delivered it to a customer, if they want to pay an additional fee, you could send them a code and increase the number of floating licenses on their network. So we'll go with that for this demonstration. Uh, we've also on the activation screen set act activation required and machine calculated and we're going to set up for a manual activation process for the license monitor application itself, which you'll see how that works in just a moment. Once we set all this information up, we're going to click a button and it's going to generate a ticket file that defines all the information required to wrap our application and to later construct the license server. So I'm gonna close the quick license window now. You can see we have this ticket file that now defines the type of license we want to create, which is a floating license. And we're going to apply that to our unprotected application. We'll do that with the add license wrapping tool. So we're going to launch the add license wrapping tool. We're going to select our application that we want to wrap. We're going to select the ticket file that defines our license, select an output folder, where we want to put the finished protected application into. And there's a few other options like retain activation and uh, some other information that comes from quick license that we can enter into this dialog. The main idea here is that this record information has everything needed to apply this ticket, which defines the license to our application and output the protected application into our output folder when we click the build button. And at this point, we should now have an application built in the output folder. We're running ad license on a Mac OS M1 computer. And it gives us the option of generating our protected application as a 64-bit Intel binary, an ARM 64-bit binary, or a universal binary to handle all the different types of macOS computers out there. If you have a Windows application, you would be running uh, ad license on a Windows computer to create your protected Windows application. You can also create a protected application from virtually any type of programming environment by uh, calling the Quick License API directly. And that would allow you to pr protect other kinds of uh, applications like uh, something that you created in a traditional programming language or a Photoshop plugin or, or basically any kind of software with almost any kind of development environment can be used uh, with this process to create applications that run on Mac, Windows, or Linux machines. The 
Quick License and Ad License tools come with the Quick License product and the uh, Make Server tool comes with the Quick License Server product. What we're going to do now is we're going to open up the Make Server window and we define a record of information that is used to construct our license server and monitor applications. So we can give a name to our, a base name to our server and we're, we've named this record of information and this information is all coming from a uh, quick license. We have uh, the type of license monitor and server application we want to generate. In this case, we'll create a universal binary. We can apply a custom icon to the server application and monitor application if we wish. We'll just go with the defaults and we'll pick an output folder where we want those two applications to be generated. And finally, we'll select that same ticket file that we defined earlier uh, with Quick License. When we click the Build button, it's going to now build the license server and monitor application. And once it's built it, you'll see those two applications stored in our output folder. So in our output folder, we see that it's created this Hello Monitor application and this Hello Server application. And this was our original uh, protected application that we're distributing. And we can rename these to whatever we want before we physically distribute these to a customer. You'll be distributing these three applications to your customer. They'll take the server application and put it on a Mac computer in their network with a fixed IP address and just double click. It launches. It just runs silently in the background. The user will then launch the monitor application. When they launch the monitor application, it's going to present an activation screen and they're going to have to activate that monitor application to their uh, computer and this ensures that they can only be running your solution on one company network. If they wanted to buy it for more than one location, they would have to pay you to activate your solution on uh, each network. So we've just set up a manual activation process to activate the uh, license monitor. And so imagine that this is running on the company's computer and back on your development computer you can run your quick license application and go and enter the request number from their computer. And we'll just type that in there and get an activation code. And that's what you'll send back to the company. So let's go ahead and quit out of the quick license application here. So we're back on the company's uh, computer and they're going to be entering that uh, code into the activation screen and click activate now and now the license monitor has been activated to their machine. Now it's going to uh, on first launch present this server setup because the license monitor wants to know the IP address of the server. Now we can run the license monitor from any whichever computer we wanted to on the network and activate it for, for use on that computer. And the server could be some other computer, but in this case of this video, they're both running on the same machine. So we know the IP address of this server is, is uh, the same machine here. So we're gonna just type in the IP address right here. And we're going to apply that and click done. And now we see our license monitor is now active. And if we quit the license monitor and run it again, uh, it's already been activated. So it just pops up the license monitor. And with the license monitor, we can click the connect button to connect to our server. And then we can do some of these other commands. For example, right now our license server is running, but it's not actually started. It's not serving licenses. 
If we want to start it, we click the Start button, and now our license server is running. If we click Status, it shows us that we our license server allows up to a total of five concurrent licenses, and currently none are being used. And we have some other buttons as well. We'll explore those a bit more once we actually have launched an application. Your protected application can be copied to any computers in the company network. And on first launch, it's going to present a dialog to locate the license server. And so the users can have to enter the fixed IP address of that license server. We'll go ahead and do that now. And then from now on, it's going to remember that address so the user could at any time just uh, launch the application. And as long as there's not more than five concurrent users of this application on the network, uh, they can run it from whatever machines they want. If they need to run more than five concurrent licenses at the same time, they'll have to come back to you to get a code so they can bump the number of floating licenses on their network. So as you can see, we'll keep our uh, protected application running here. And let's go back to the license monitor. And if we connect to the server and do a status command, it now shows that of our total of five licenses, one is currently in use. And if we look at the uh, details of that, it shows for that license it shows the IP address of that computer, which in this simple example is we're running everything on the same computer, but it could be any computer on the network where this application is running, and also the computer name and the username of the account. To summarize, you can use Quick License to protect virtually any kind of software developed with any programming language running on a Mac, Windows, or Linux computer. And you can also use Quick License Server to produce a license monitor and server application that runs on a Mac or Windows computer in that network and serves licenses to those protected Mac, Windows, or Linux applications.